time we defined what the electric field was at a point in space. Now let's try to find an expression for the electric field due to a single point charge, point charge Q. Before we do that, let's look at how we said, if you want to get the field, for instance, at this point right here, we need to bring a test charge. So we're going to bring a test charge Q node. And just to point out, these charges are point charges. I put them with big size here so you can see them, that's all, but they're just point charges. They have no size to them. So we need to bring a test charge Q node and put it at this point where we want to find the field. We measure the force, find the force, divide by Q node, and that gives us the electric field at this point. So let's start by looking at the force itself. If we define the distance between Q and Q node to be RQP, P is the point here that we want to get the electric field at. So the force FQ Q node, what does it mean? It means the force on Q node due to Q. This is something we did before in detail. The point P is the point where Q node is located. So can you think what the expression for the force is using the same notation that we used before? So I put here a unit vector QP. That means the unit vector points from the charge Q to the point P where you want to find the field. So in terms of this notation, what would you write down for the force? As before, the force is KEQ Q node over RQP squared. And you have to put the Q and Q node with their sign. And then you multiply by the unit vector pointing from charge Q to point P. So this is what the force is. Now, as we said, what would the electric field be at point P? So this is again the force. And remember, to get the field, you, get, you take the force and you divide by the test charge that you put at that point. So you get the force divided by Q node. When you divide the force by Q node, the thing that's remaining, the quantity that's remaining, is KEQ over R squared R hat. So that then will be the vector that represents the vector or the electric field vector at point P. See here, the electric field vector at point P doesn't depend at all on the value of the test charge that you brought to that to calculate the field. Because when you divide out by the charge Q node, it, ca it cancels from the equation and it doesn't depend at all then on the value of the charge that you brought. So the electric field vector is a specific, it only depends on this charge, the charge Q, and the distance between the charge Q and the point P and the location of the chart, the point where you want to find the electric field, the location of point P. But it doesn't depend on the test charge that you used to calculate the electric field or to evaluate the electric field. And since this charge is positive, we can write this as plus magnitude of Q. That means that the electric field vector points in the same direction as this unit vector, because this is all positive. So that means the electric field vector at point P points exactly in the same direction as the R hat unit vector due to when you have a point charge, a positive point charge. Now let's look at different points in space and try to get a, a qualitative feeling of what this electric field vector looks at the different points. First of all, we notice that if you go to this point, for instance, or this point, or this point, or this point, the electric field vector points along the radial direction from the charge Q to the point. So you make these lines going out of the charge Q towards the point where you want to find the electric field and the electric field always points along this line. The second thing is that the electric field vector is small when you go to a large distance away. The electric field is large when you go to a small distance but when you go to a larger distance the electric field vector gets smaller. And that's because of the 1 over r squared dependence in the equation. As you go to farther values of r away from the charge q, um, the denominator gets larger and the vector itself gets smaller. So the effect of the charge q gets weaker as you go to larger and larger distances away from the, away from the original charge. Of course, the electric field is proportional to the charge. So the more charge you have here, the source charge, the more the electric field. And the direction, as we said, it always points in the direction from the charge Q towards the point P where you want to find the electric field. 